Greetings, Teen Wolf enthusiasts. Today, we embark on a journey through Beacon Hills, unraveling the mysteries behind the diverse supernatural species that inhabit this extraordinary world. From the primal power of werewolves to the enigmatic force of the Nogatsune, this is the definitive guide to the key creatures that shape the Teen Wolf narrative. Let's begin with the quintessential supernatural beings, the werewolves. In Teen Wolf, werewolves are the predominant supernatural species in the Teen Wolf universe, and they were the first supernatural creature to be introduced in the series. They are shapeshifters who have the ability to transform from an ordinary human appearance to a partially lupine form that includes glowing eyes, which are either gold, blue, or red, depending on the rank or other factors, pointed ears, mutton chops, claws and fangs, and a rigid brow. In rare cases, werewolves can also have such advanced shape-shifting abilities that can actually turn into a real wolf or can transform into a large, monstrous, bipedal wolfman. From alphas like Scott McCall to betas like Derek Hale, werewolves are at the core of the series. Enter the malevolent Nogatsune, a powerful and cunning spirit that thrives on chaos. Possessing host bodies, the Nogatsune, as seen in the character of Style Stalinsky, brings psychological and supernatural terror to Beacon Hills. Its manipulative nature and dark influence adds a layer of horror to the show. He was a void Kitsune who fed on chaos, pain, and strife. He was also first mentioned by Katashi and Silverfinger. When Chris Argent, Allison Argent, and Isaac Leahy came to ask him about came to ask him about the Oni demons who had recently come to Beacon Hills, Katashi explained that the Oni were hunting a Nogatsune or Void Kitsune by examining every supernatural creature they came upon to make sure they hadn't been possessed by the dark Kitsune in question. The Kanema, a creature of vengeance and a shapeshifter, is born from a tragic backstory. The Kanema is essentially a werewolf whose transformation has somehow gone wrong. It is believed that this is a result of the personal demons in the Kanema's past, which for some reason caused the human to mutate and take on a more reptilian form. Unlike a werewolf who is predisposed to seek out a pack, as it both makes them more powerful individually and provides them with a support system of fellow werewolves who are closer to them than family. The Kanema is an inherently subservient being who seeks out a master to control its actions. The Kanema is about the size of an average human, it has dark green reptilian scales, while the beta form has a long, smooth, normal tail. The tail on the alpha Kanema has a round end that is covered in spikes, which may or may not be coated by Kanema venom. The alpha form also includes wings on the Kanema's back, and both forms of the Kanema have very large and sharp claws, almost like talons, that, dischar that discharge some type of paralytic venom that is capable of rendering its victims totally immobile from the neck down within seconds. The length of time it takes to become fully paralyzed, as well as the length of time the person remains paralyzed, varies based on several different factors, such as how much venom they were exposed to and how they were exposed as well as whether or not the victim has a supernatural healing ability. Like most reptiles, the Kanema can climb walls. Kanemas also have long, thin, double-rolled fangs that are similar in appearance to those of a Wendigo. Its appearance and abilities, along with the emotional depth of characters like Jackson Whitmore, make the Kanema a fascinating addition to the Teen Wolf bestiary. Let's explore the Were Coyotes, a unique blend of human and supernatural. Characters like Malia Tate navigate the complexities of their dual nature. The Were Coyote is a species of human animal hybrid that is distantly related to the werewolf. It is unknown if they can gain power from being in a pack or if an alpha can draw upon more power from a Were Coyote in its pack. However, an alpha's roar has the same exact effect on a Were Coyote 
as it does on a werewolf, forcing the shapeshifter in question to transform or allowing them to fight through pain and other weaknesses in order to shift. Additionally, the were coyote shares the same kind of family classification as werewolves as well. Due to the fact that mundane coyotes and wolves are both canine creatures, were coyotes have the power to shift their features into that of a coyote with pointed ears, furry sideburns, glowing eyes, fangs, and claws, and at least some were coyotes such as Malia Tate can fully shift their bodies into that of a true coyote. A dark druid is a druid who has gone down the wrong path, presumably valuing their own desires over that of maintaining the balance of nature as druids are meant to do. The word Darak is said in the show to mean dark oak in Gaelic, as opposed to druid which is said to translate to wise oak, engaging in ritualistic sacrifices, the Darak taps into dark magic to achieve its goals. Its presence serves as a dark omen weaving a web of mystery and danger throughout Beacon Hills. Banshees are special human women who have the supernatural power to sense and predict when someone is about to die. As a result, they are considered harbingers of death and are often referred to as the Wailing Woman due to the fact that they unconsciously scream to announce when someone has died, usually those killed by supernatural forces, though their scream can also be used for other purposes. These women predict death through premonitions, which can be auditory, visual, or both, depending on the power level of the Banshee in question. When a Banshee has a premonition, the sounds and or sights they perceive indicate various factors that will lead to or directly cause the death of someone in their vicinity, which are usually people harmed by the supernatural or someone the Banshee knows. However, these premonitions are not always literal and can require a certain amount of interpretation. Additionally, since the future is always in flux, a death that a Banshee has predicted may not come to pass if the events or cause of death can be averted using the knowledge gained by the Banshee's premonition. This can be a very useful power for Banshees who are members of a pack such as Lydia Martin as it gives them a team of people to help them prevent the foretold deaths. Lydia Martin with her Banshee abilities adds an element of the supernatural that goes beyond physical prowess. The Banshee's role in the series is a testament to the diverse supernatural elements in Teen Wolf. Celtic Druids, also known simply as Druids, are a group of humans in the Teen Wolf series who are dedicated to maintaining the balance of nature by spending a great deal of their lives studying the supernatural world and the mystical arts. Legend has it that many Druids have a connection to werewolves dating back thousands of years, and as a result, they are known as emissaries or advisors to werewolf packs, giving them guidance in their supernatural lives while also keeping them connected to their humanity. This scholarly and diplomatic role is why they are known as Druids, as the word is said to mean wise oak, as mentioned before when discussing the rocks. However, Druids who act as emissaries to a werewolf pack typically keep their identities hidden from everyone except for the alpha of the pack. Although there are exceptions to this pattern, such as the McCall pack in this case, their emissary Alan Deaton is known by and close to all members of the pack, and he encourages each one of them to console him whenever they are in need of his counsel, regardless of whether or not their alpha, Scott McCall, is present or has knowledge of the meeting. With ties to ancient magic, druids like Deaton bring wisdom and mystique to the series. Their knowledge and connection to the supernatural make them key players in the battle against the dark forces who plague Beacon Hills. Enter the Kitsune, a supernatural species rooted in Japanese folklore. Possessing fox-like characteristics and a range of mystical abilities, Kitsune characters like Kiryuki Mora introduce a cultural and magical richness to Teen Wolf. Kitsune are a supernatural species of Japanese fox spirits that are also commonly referred to simply as foxes. 
They are creatures who live for many centuries, growing more powerful as they age, and because they are supernatural creatures, their psychology is different from that of other true shapeshifters such as werewolves. All kitsune seem to possess a multitude of supernatural abilities such as enhanced strength, speed and agility and reflexes, a natural aptitude for weaponry and combat, production of foxfire, and accelerated healing. However, they also possess additional powers, typically elemental in nature, which vary depending on the specific type of kitsune in question. They accumulate tails throughout their lives that increase the strength of their powers and the most powerful of their kind is said to have nine tails. From electrokinesis to wielding a katana, kitsune contribute to the show's ever expanding mythology. Supernatural samurai serve as enforcers of balance. Their arrival signals impending danger and their lethality makes them formidable adversaries. Oni are a spiritual species of supernatural demonic warriors who are so powerful that they are described as a force of nature that is meant to be endured rather than fought. The species was first introduced in season 3 after Noshiko Yukimura summoned at least 7 Oni total with the supernatural power in her kitsune tales and they acted as minor antagonists throughout season 3b. The Oni then made another brief appearance in season 5 when the desert Oni was summoned by the skinwalkers to test Kiryuki Mora's ability to control her inner thunder kitsune spirit. They eventually returned as minor antagonists in the Teen Wolf movie as well. The Oni appear to be made of pure darkness that is contained within their samurai armor. They are animated by a firefly that lives inside their chest. The Oni tie to Japanese mythology and their role as protectors against dark forces amplify the mystical elements of Teen Wolf. Jaguars, also known as the Nagal, are a species of shapeshifters that were introduced during season 4 of MTV's Teen Wolf. The lore behind the Were Jaguar is based on the Aztec legend of Tezcalapoca, a god that had a strong connection to Were Jaguars. Kate Argent was the first Were Jaguar seen in the series. Hayden Romero was a part Were Jaguar Chimera prior to being bitten and turned into a werewolf by Scott McCall, but demonstrated very few Were Jaguar abilities. Due to there being only one true Were Jaguar in the series, there is very little known about the species mythology. While not certain, there does appear to be a link between Were Jaguars and the Berserker species based on Kate Argent's ability to create, control, and sense Berserkers. The Were Jaguar adds a distinct flavor to the show's supernatural tapestry. Teen Wolf, Berserkers are men who, after special rituals, using the pelts and bones of bears, gain supernatural powers of strength, speed, and durability. However, doing so also causes them to channel their bears' ferocity, causing them to become mindlessly violent beings. They were first introduced in Season 4 as Kate's henchmen after the revelation that she had been transformed into a were jaguar. After becoming a berserker, the animal spirit very quickly burns away the humanity within the person and they become pure animals. According to Chris Argent, this is due to the fact that berserkers are intempered by the moon like werewolves. Clad in the armor made from the skin of a rare shapeshifter, berserkers serve as powerful agents of destruction. Their role in the series unveils a connection to an old age threat that adds depth to the show's lore.
Wendigos are a species of man-eating shapeshifter. According to research done by Stile Stalinsky, Native American folklore states that if a person eats human flesh, they would turn into a creature who not only had an insatiable hunger for it, but who also needed it to live. Wendigos survive from eating human flesh and blood, and their constant urge to consume is unmatched and very difficult to control. When they become hungry, they will feed on the nearest potential victim, as evidenced in the episode Muted, when Sean Walcott was unable to go longer than a full day without succumbing to his hunger and feeding on a sheriff's deputy. Wendigos are incredibly strong and are able to overpower humans and even werewolves with relative ease. Wendigos, like Sean Walcott, introduce a chilling horror element to Teen Wolf. The Wendigo mythos explored in the series adds layers of fear and suspense. The Dread Doctors, mysterious and malevolent figures conducting horrifying experiments that give rise to new supernatural beings. The Dread Doctors were the main antagonist of Season 5, though their influence on the supernatural world lingered throughout Season 6 as well. They first appeared in the episode Creatures of the Night, when they were seen admonishing Belasco, a werewolf Garuda hybrid, for failing to kill Scott McCall and taking his alpha powers. From then on, it was quickly revealed that they were experimenting on teenagers and turning them into hybrid creatures that became known as Chimera, an artificially created pseudo-supernatural being made up of parts of different creatures. Among those they turned into Chimeras were Theo Rakin, Belasco, Tracy Stewart, Donovan Donati, Lucas, Josh Diaz, Hayden Romero, Corey, Beth, and Noah Patrick. In addition to these hybrid creatures, the Dread Doctors also perform procedures on several true supernatural creatures as well, including shocking Scott McCall in the chest to exasperate his Wolfsbane induced asthma attacks and weaken him, summoning a lightning bolt to channel through a lightning rod inserted into Kiryuki Mora's eye to supernaturally enhance her Kitsune spirit, and giving Liam Dunbar an infusion of a special type of Wolfsbane in the form of a black fluid through an IV pump. Their role as architects of the supernatural challenges both the characters and the audience. A chimera is a human who has been scientifically given the powers of at least one supernatural species by the Dread Doctors, although they typically have the traits of two of these species. According to Alan Deaton, these hybrid creatures are not bound by the same rules as real supernatural creatures since they were created through science rather than magic or mysticism, making them essentially enhanced humans. supernatural guardians of the supernatural bring an otherworldly aspect to Teen Wolf. The Hellhound, also known as the Black Dog or the Bearer of Death, is a supernatural species of amortal supernatural spirits who possess the bodies of humans upon being reborn on Earth in order to complete their destined missions. They possess pyrokinetic and thermokinetic powers and are said to be the guardians of the supernatural world, making it their duty to make sure this world remains a secret to the human world. They are neither good nor evil, being utterly neutral and focused on only their natural duty. According to folklore and legend, hellhounds ride the storm with the ghost riders of the wild hunt, though their specific nature within the hunt remains a mystery as of now. The vessel of a hellhound often has no idea of this fact. For example, Paris had no idea that he had been possessed by the hellhound for over a year until he was finally informed of his supernatural identity by Chris and Gerard Argent in the episode The Sword and the Spirit. Because the Hellhound is a creature of the night, the transformation into their Hellhound form usually happens after nightfall, during which point it typically completely takes over the human host, rep repressing the host spirit until their job is done for the evening. However, the Hellhound is capable of fully merging with its host, allowing the host conscious control over its powers so that they can have a more equal relationship 
while still completing their mission. This eventually became the case with Jordan Parrish and the Hellhound possessing him, Cerberus, and it can be assumed the same was the case with Howen and his host. Hellhounds like Jordan Parrish add a layer of mysticism and heroism to the series. Beast, a creature of immense power in destruction, serves as a formidable antagonist in Teen Wolf. The Beast of Javadan, a monstrous werewolf who terrorized France in the 1700s, the Beast was eventually killed by one of the ancestors of the Argent family of werewolves. In 2012, a trio of ancient para-scientists known as the Dread Doctors who recovered previously resurrected the Beast by summoning essence into the body of their final chimera who was eventually revealed to be Mason. The Beast of Javadan's beast form is a more larger version of the alpha werewolf's beast form, being almost twice the size with more fur covering its body as well as having large visible red veins. The face of the beast is also very peculiar, being more feline than canine with an oversized mouth with no lips. Additionally, the beast almost appears as though it's made up of black smoke or shadows and has been described as looking both solid and shapeless at the same time. Instead of eyes like typical werewolves, which either have red, blue, or gold irises, the entire surface of the beast eyes are a glowing white blue, specifically an electric blue. It is shown that the beast had these traits in its original life, meaning that it was never a normal werewolf to begin with. Thus, its strange powers and appearance have nothing to do with the Dread Doctors or it coming from a chimera. The beast, massive and monstrous form, challenges the supernaturals of Beacon Hills. The Lowenbinch, also known as the Were-Lion, are a species of supernatural shapeshifters introduced during season six. Like their Lupine cousins, Low and Minch have the power to transform from a regular human appearance to a partially lion-like form that includes glowing eyes, pointed ears, claws, and fangs, and a rigid brow. Though these features are noticeably different from those of werewolves, only one known Low and Minch has been seen so far, Garrett Douglas, a former captain in the Nazi German military. A Low and Minch functions much like a werewolf in that they follow the same hierarchy structure, judging by the fact that Garrett was an alpha with red eyes. This theory is supported by the fact that in the natural world, lions operate in pride, suggesting that a supernatural lion shapeshifter like the Loa Minch would be free to either join or form a Loa Minch pride or join a regular werewolf pack and may even gain a power boost from being in one. However, since there is a lack of information about this species, this has yet to be confirmed to be true. It is unclear why Mason incorrectly described a Loa Minch as being part wolf since in all the legends outside of Teen Wolf and in real life mythology, a Loa Minch is not actually half wolf and half lion at all, but half lion and half man, essentially a were lion as mentioned before. The evolved chimera Theo Raken also incorrectly described Douglas as an alpha werewolf, mostly because the Dread Doctors had never bothered to correct him. With their lion-like appearance and connection to the Wild Hunt, the Loamans contributes to the series and exploration of ancient and otherworldly forces. Skinwalkers are a species of shapeshifters who were introduced in Teen Wolf in Season 5. According to Native American folklore, skinwalkers are people that possess the ability to shapeshift into any animal at will. In most legends, skinwalkers are considered evil, but in the series, this doesn't seem to be the case. Yoshiko Yukimura even made a point of reminding Kira that the skinwalkers wearing animal pelts and fighting with spears was not that different from Kira herself wearing a leather jacket and then wielding a katana. They traditionally transform into wolves, coyotes, owls, foxes, or crows, but they are said to be able to turn into any animal so long as it is native to their region. They've been known to wear, pe they've been known to wear the pelt of the animal they desire to shift into, though this doesn't seem to be a requirement at all. 
Their enigmatic nature and ties to Native American mythology adds depth to the show's supernatural diversity. introduces a cosmic and existential threat to Teen Wolf. Led by the Ghost Riders who erase people from existence, the Wild Hunt challenges the very fabric of reality in Beacon Hills. The Ghost Riders have a much more Old Western appearance. They ride horses while wearing cowboy hats and old withered clothing typical of the 1800s while also arming themselves with supernatural pistols and whips. The Ghost Rider's face appears to be pale and heavily lined as if scarred and their mouths are kept shut due to the numerous strips of skin stitching it together. There is also blackness where their eyes should be. Their presence and the mystery surrounding them elevate the show's supernatural stakes. Last but certainly not least comes the Anukate, a creature of fear and horror that serves as a powerful antagonist within Teen Wolf. The Anukate is an ancient shapeshifter known among the druids as a creature of disharmony that can manipulate people into turning on each other. It does this by creating and amplifying a person's fear as well as any associated emotions such as paranoia panic, anger, and even suicidal ideation. This causes people who have never or desired to commit violent acts becoming hostile to the source of their fear. As a result, the Anukate has no need to commit violent personally. As a result, the Anukate has no need to commit violence personally or require the physical powers that most other supernatural species possesses, such as claws and fangs. All the while, the Anukate feeds on the fear of those inflicted by its power, which makes it more powerful and dangerous. Because it is known for causing disharmony and discord, the Anukate is also known as double face or two faces, with representations of the creature typically depicting half of its face as beautiful and the other half as hideous. With the ability to amplify fear and terror, the Anukate brings psychological horror to the forefront, testing the resilience of both human and supernatural characters. And there you have it folks, a general exploration of the key supernatural species within Teen Wolf, from the primal strength of werewolves to the otherworldly threat of the Wild Hunt, Beacon Hills is a melting pot of the extraordinary. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like as it helps this video perform better in the YouTube algorithm. Comment your thoughts on this video down below. I go through all the comments, so any feedback is appreciated. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider making today that day. I cover anything Supernatural related, including television shows and movies, but I primarily cover MTV's Teen Wolf. When you subscribe, don't forget to also hit that bell icon and set those notifications to all so that you will never miss a future video. Recently, I opened channel memberships as well, so if you want to further support my channel, consider becoming a member by consider becoming a member by hitting that join button. You get special perks that normal subscribers don't, such as priority replies, exclusive members only streams and videos, as well as more. Also, if you aren't aware, my first novel, True Alpha, dropped back in June 2023. You can grab yourself a digital copy over on Amazon. There are no physical copies for the time being, so apologies for the inconvenience. To further support the series, you can visit the official True Alpha fandom site and the official True Alpha YouTube channel, both of which will be linked in the pinned comment below, as well as the description. I release new chapters monthly on my Patreon, and the series will be returning later this year in August with chapter 13. The second book is set to release next year in April 2025. But until next time, this is Jade's Corner, signing off. Peace.